Hello, my name is Tony Roy from Into Pickle and we are Pickleball. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do some paddle maintenance. Specifically, we're gonna be putting on a new overgrip on here. We're gonna be putting some lead tape on it and some protective tape. If you wanna know more about why we do this and know how to put it on, stay tuned for the video. All aboard. I have all the parts that I need to modify the paddle laid out before me here on the workbench. I'll pan the camera down in a minute and show you that and show you how to put it on. But before we put those on, let's talk a little bit about why we put these things on a paddle. I just got my new diadem icon paddle in the mail the other day. I haven't had a chance to put anything on it yet, the overgrip or any of the tapes on it. So I figured it would be a good chance to share that with you. If you're interested in knowing more about this paddle, this is an awesome paddle. It's one I play with, CJ plays with it, and Jill plays with it. I'll link below to our blog on it. You can read about it. But in this video, let's talk about what it is that we want to do to the paddle and why we want to do it. First of all, or firstly, you can take this paddle out of the out of the box and just go play with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Go play with the paddle, absolutely fine. Some players put their name on there, whatever, that's great. You can take this paddle as it is and you can take it out of the courts and it'll play just fine. The reason we do these three things is, let's take it in parts. First, the overgrip. The reason that I put an overgrip on my paddle is because the grip that comes from the factory, it's a fine grip, uh, but it is a little more complex to replace. Um, it's also a little more expensive, not that that's the biggest issue in the world, but you know, the, these, these grips are a little more expensive and a little more complex to replace. If you use a, an overgrip, something like this, it's kind of a thin overgrip. This one's a little bit rubbery. I'll show you a couple of different options in a second. Um, but basically if I put an overgrip on this, I can change the overgrip whenever the, the grip starts getting a little bit, um, oily or, or, you know, you get sweat on it, whatever. Uh, it's fairly easy to change the overgrip. You can buy an overgrip for about a dollar a piece if you buy in quantity. A little bit more if you want to buy smaller amounts. Uh, if you go to wearepickleball.com forward slash resources, we'll link to a couple of different options there, including the one that uh, that we use uh, to put on, that I'm going to show you that I'm going to put on this paddle. Uh, but basically, the, the nice thing about the overgrip is it allows you to change the grip fairly easily at a fairly reasonable price um, whenever it gets, starts to get oils on there. There's nothing you can do to avoid, uh, unless you don't have oils on your hands, there's nothing you can do to avoid getting oil on it. If you see like some players have like a white grip on their paddle, and it'll start to get brown or blackish gray, that's because of the oils and dirt and stuff like that accumulating on there. And what'll happen is it won't grip as well. With the overgrips, you just rip it off, throw it out, put another one on, and you're good to go on the overgrip. So that's uh, one reason to overgrip. Another reason to overgrip is you can modify the size of your paddle grip. Uh, so, you know, sometimes what happens is players like this paddle grip is a little bit too small for me. Uh, my finger is touching uh, the heel of my hand. So by putting a grip on it, I can make it a little bit larger. You can even put two grips on there, uh, whatever it is to make you feel more comfortable. Another trick you can use is sometimes you can take a, a grip that feels too thick um, and you can remove the, the stock grip or the grip that came from the factory. And then you can put an overgrip on there. Usually the overgrips are thinner. So if you need the grip to be a little bit smaller, that's a trick you can use uh, to get the grip uh, to, you know, smaller and hopefully fit your hand a little better. Let's talk a little bit about lead tape. Lead tape has a, a few different uses, but basically whenever you're applying lead tape to the paddle, what you're doing is you're changing the weight of the paddle, but also the weight distribution of the paddle. And that's really important. Some players will put lead tape on the top of the paddle around here. Um, we don't recommend that normally. Uh, usually what happens, not usually, what happens is when you put lead tape up here, you're increasing the swing weight of the paddle. Think about it like, you know, the difference between a regular size hammer and a sledgehammer, a regular like, you know, carpentry hammer or a normal hammer on the house and a sledgehammer. It's not quite that extreme, but it, you're heading in that direction. What you're doing is by adding weight to the, to the top of the paddle, to the end of the paddle, what you're doing is you're increasing the swing weight of that paddle as you swing it through the air. Good news is you're gonna really hammer that ball when you hit it. The bad news is it's going to two a couple different things. One, it's going to be slower to move. So, you know, in pickleball, um, the way that, that I play pickleball, at least, you know, when I play pickleball, I, I value paddle speed more than I value paddle power, if you will, or energy transfer. So you're going to suffer on the energy, on the speed department. The other place you're going to suffer is you're going to suffer potentially in your arm. So when you're out on the pickleball court, you've been playing a long day, three hours, whatever, um, you know, that's a lot of movement, a lot of small muscles getting uh, stressed out there. So adding a lot of weight to the top of the paddle is probably not your best bet. What we like to do is actually, I, I, I well, let me explain a couple more things. And I'll tell you exactly what we like to do. So the other thing you can do is you can put, you can put lead tape on the sides on the, uh, the three and nine. 
uh, o'clock, depending on how you're looking at it, three and nine o'clock. What that does is it helps avoid uh, flood or minimizes flutter of the paddle or vibration or, or torque of the paddle. So what happens is you'll take your paddle out uh, to defend, let's say, and if the ball hits, say, up here, it's going to push the paddle this way, you know, push it back like this. By having some weight at the bottom, it basically acts as a counterbalance. Think about it like a ballast on a ship if you're familiar with that concept. It's the same when you add uh, some, le some weight on the top and on the bottom. Um, I came across a video by uh, Ben Johns, uh, obviously an amazing player and and uh, and just great professional. Um, he talked about putting tape here and here. So that changed my way of doing it. I used to put it up in the corners like this uh, to give myself a tiny bit more swing weight, not on the top but on the on the edges here, uh, and then to avoid the flutter. But now, since I since I saw Ben's video, I've been following his advice, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. Where we put the tape here and here. What that does is it helps avoid the flutter or prevent that flutter or that torque on, on the paddle, the twisting of the paddle, but it doesn't um, take away the, it doesn't affect the, the swing weight of the paddle in making it more head heavy. So it doesn't affect my speed. My paddle speed remains pretty consistent by adding tape down here. And that's what we're going to do in this video. But those are some different ideas on lead tape. The beautiful thing about lead tape is you can buy these rolls. There's a, there's a thick roll like this, uh, which is, this is like golfer's lead tape. Uh, that, uh, this you can find on Amazon. And again, I'll, the resources link will have it. And then this is a little thinner tape. This is by Turna. So since this is a thin paddle, I'm going to use the thinner tape. If you have a regular width paddle or one of the, the thicker paddles, wider paddles, you can use this, um, golfer's tape. It is going to be heavier per inch. So just be careful of that. Um, you have the nice thing about lead tape is you can put lead tape on, take it off, move it around, find, find how you like it. It'll affect your sweet spot some too, so you can move it around, see what you think. Um, when you add a lot of lead weight to a paddle, it'll become a little dead. Like you'll feel like when you hit with it, it'll kind of deaden, over deaden the paddle some. Some so again, you can play around with it. It's it's an inexpensive way of doing it or dealing with it. Uh, one piece of advice is that these are um, lead tape, so we don't recommend leaving these exposed. And I'll show you how I do it when I put this on. How I put a cover tape on on top of it, which leads me into the the protective tapes, the edge guard tapes. The edge guard tapes are really intended just to protect the edge guard of the paddle. So they're they're basically um, they look like this. So I've already cut a couple of strips. So basically, this is a head brand. It's a really good brand. I'll show you in a second. But basically, um, you cut these little strips. You put them on the corners where you're going to scuff the paddle. And the idea is that when you you know when you hit the court with the paddle, instead of the paddle edge guard absorbing the the impact of the court or absorbing the damage of the court this tape will absorb it. And what'll happen is once the tape gets scuffed up, you just rip it off, put another piece of tape and you're good to go. I'm also going to use this lead or this cover tape to cover up the lead pieces that I'm going to put on this paddle. Uh, so you'll see how that works as well. While we're on the subject, oh, let me compare, let me show you the difference. So this is, um, this is the tape that we put on. So this is head. Babolat also has a good product for the, the uh, head tape and we'll put those in the resources. But basically this is a nice thick tape. It has a good uh, thickness to it. Some players will put um, electric tape on there. So this is a roll of electric tape. I don't like putting electric tape on there. I find that it, it comes off. I also find sometimes it'll get gummy too. It'll get the the, 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 uh, rub, the uh, glue on here can get kind of sticky. And the other thing is um, it's not thick enough, I don't think, compared to this kind of tape. So I recommend this kind of tape. And then the uh, there's another kind of tape that, that I bought online. I can't remember the brand, but uh, it's another type of protective tape I bought. I didn't really, um, didn't really like it too much. So I didn't use that. So the, the over grips that we're going to put on that we're going to look at are going to be, uh, this one is a uh, turn grip. It's a mega tech, I believe it's called. And basically it's a, um, it's a tack. It's a rubbery kind of a grip. So it has a rubbery feel to it. When you get these, uh, these kind of tapes will come with a, or the over grips, I should say, will come with a plastic cover. So make sure that you remove this plastic cover um, off the overgrip. The side that has the plastic cover is the outside, and this will be the inside of the overgrip, and that's how you're going to want to put it on. To give you a comparison, this is another Turna product. And Turna, it's spelled like this, T-O-U-R-N-A. And again, we'll put that in the resources. But if you look at this one, you can see it's kind of shiny. This is their MegaTac. And then this one here, I don't remember which side is the outside. I think it's this one here. This is um, a more of a cloth feel one that Turner makes as well. This one is very well regarded in the tennis world. I used to use this one. I have used this one in pickleball as well. Uh, I've migrated to this one just because I like the feel of it better. 
But if you're looking for an overgrip, either one of these will do you just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pan the camera down now and show you how to put them on. So here we have everything on the on our work desk here and we're gonna basically start working. We'll work from this side to this side. So left to right for me, maybe right to left on your screen, but we're gonna work starting with the grip and then we're gonna work our way up. Interesting uh, fact you may or may not know is that the lines on this grip, the way they come from the factory are made for right-handed players. If I grab the paddle with my right hand, this is my right hand, you see that the my fingers go with the paddle or with the way the grip is on there. Uh, if I grab it with my left arm, or grip it with my left hand, which is what I play with since I'm left-handed. Let me see, that's, there you go. Um, you may be able to see that it's going across. So when I grip this paddle, I'm gonna grip it for a left-handed player, meaning I'm gonna grip it, grip it opposite these, uh, these lines, the grip that's on there now. If you're a right-handed player, you just follow these lines as you put it on there. So I have, I've taken off the from the roll, the big roll of, of tape, I've taken off, or grip, I've taken off one grip. It gets kind of sticky if, since I took the plastic off already. It'll kind of stick to itself a little bit. It's not a big deal. Um, and then, so that's, this is gonna be the outside, the shiny part, and this is the inside is the, is the more matte part. There's another piece I have here. The reason I have this here is to remind myself that, or to, to remind myself to tell you that if you, have a paddle that has a shorter grip handle. You can sometimes take these grips and cut them in half. This is a half grip because I I, I gripped I overgripped the Paddle Tech Bantam XL, which has a smaller um, a smaller uh, grip length. So I was able to use half just to no reason to, to discard it unnecessarily. Oh, this red. If you're wondering what this red is, this is just the tape to finish it off. So here is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to start here. And then you're gonna use your thumb to pin it. And the reason it's tricky is because you have a little bit of a bevel here and you, you have to, if you, if you don't pull and stretch and reacquire your, your process, you're going to end up with bubbles in your grip and that's no fun. So you can see the difference, maybe, yeah, maybe you can see that. So as I've stretched it, it's gotten narrower than the original one uh, or narrower than it was originally. The reason I'm stretching it is to create the shape that I want and then it, usually you have to release it once or twice. And then you're basically, you're trying to acquire, I mean, I have to release this one. You're trying to acquire a pattern like, get a little bit of a bubble there, but I think I can live with that. That's not that bad. And then basically what I'm gonna do is just keep turning, following the line, usually about a quarter inch overlap, depending on how you like it, but that's about a quarter inch, I would say, overlap there as I go around. Once you get out of the, the the beveled part here, you can stop pulling so much tension and then just kind of wrap it around. I'll show you how to do the clean finish and the unclean finish, if you will. It's just basically you finish it and you just come back around it without cutting it and making it look pretty, but works the same. <coughs> Excuse me, unless you're using two-handed backhand or something like that and you, and you care exactly how it feels at the very top. So you can see how it basically just goes on. Then once we get up here, so we're gonna basically find a spot. I'm gonna eyeball it around here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap it and then take my scissors here and cut this way. I'm not a perfectionist on this, so I'm, I'm okay with it being, uh, usually I'd like to get this ready, at least get it started. So this is the finishing tape that goes around the, the top, holding it together. Just one, generally one, one time around will work for that. Then you get it here and see, so by cutting it, it just makes it follow it like that. So, you know, you don't have to cut it there. You can just have it come straight around. It's not, not a big deal. Depends on, depends on the aesthetics you're looking for, but it won't change the performance of the grip. That's it. Then I'm going to basically wrap this one time around and we'll be done with the overgrip. So that's it. That's the overgrip. Overgrip's on there. It's ready to be gripped and go along. So all right, let's move on to the lead tape. The lead tape, I've already cut a couple of pieces here. Normally what you're gonna do is, like I said, you can just play around with this stuff so it's not, not the end of the world, um, uh, you know, if you don't get it right, exactly right the first time. I'm using the thinner one because it's a thin paddle. Um, you know, I tried I cut them pretty close. Basically, I cut one and then I followed it to cut the other one. And then again, no, no magic. Just find a spot. So I'm going to use this. 
see if you can see this. I'm gonna use this mark here to start my start my lead tape. That way I'll know the other side where to start. So that's one side. I'm gonna put the same same sort of piece on the other side. Doesn't look like a lot of tape, and it isn't, but you know it'll make a difference when you're out there. These paddles only weigh. Uh, this is, I believe, a 7.7 ounce paddle. Yep, seven. Yep, 7.7 7 ounce paddle. So any weight you add to it, particularly when you're adding it on the edges here, you know, up on the on the head of the paddle, it's going to make a difference. One other quick thing I forgot to mention is if you add lead tape to the top of the paddle up in here, um, what I recommend is, and you're putting an overgrip on here, take some lead tape and put it underneath your overgrip. What that'll do is that'll that'll retain the the weight, the balance of the paddle will be more, it'll be better balanced than if you just put it on the top and just make it super heavy on the top. So, all right, so let's move on to the protective tape. I'm using the head tape that I showed you earlier. And what we're going to do here is, I went a little fuzzy, there we go. Um, so we're going to do here is we're going to use, uh, what I did is cut them in half uh, lengthwise because it's a, it's a thin paddle. So we're going to basically put that on here. Not sure why this, uh, Camera seems to be coming out of focus. Apologies for that, but didn't seem to affect any of the um, any of the actual content that you needed. So this this tape is actually pretty sticky in a good way. It's not uh, it doesn't it leaves no residual glue, but it does have a good stickiness to it. So sometimes it can be a little difficult to get off. So there you go. And then my the first thing I'm gonna do is cover up these pieces of lead tape. I'm not trying to protect this part of the paddle because. Hopefully I won't be scraping this part of the paddle on the court. That'd be a little weird. Possible, but um, but I'm just trying to cover up this lead tape. Too often I see players out there with um, with lead tape on their paddles and no cover on it. And not to tell you how to do your business, but it is lead tape. And if you know the story of Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter, that's how hatters became mad, was because they used to work with, uh, actually I think it might have been Mercury. But similar concept, heavy metal. All right, so those pieces are on. You can see there and there, cool beans. And now we're gonna put a couple pieces on the top and that'll be the paddle, will be ready for action. And again, these pieces here, some play, you can run a, a, a strip of tape all the way along the top, that's fine. I used to do that, then I realized I wasn't really nicking it up, I wasn't really nicking it up here, right? So. I used to run it all the way around, but you know, I don't really scrape it up there. So I figured, well, why not put it where I need it? So again, you find a spot, if you want it to be aesthetically pleasing, you can find a spot that um, you can use on both sides. Here I just picked a, one of the rivets on this paddle. It has these, it's an interesting paddle because even though it has an edge guard, I'm not sure that the edge guard on this paddle is part of the structure of the paddle. In most paddles, some people ask questions whether they can take an edge guard off a paddle. Do not take an edge guard off a paddle. Uh, I mean, call a manufacturer. If they say you can do it, do it. But, but normally on a on a on a normal, well, I almost used a whole piece there. Normally on a on a uh, on a regular paddle, you know, like a paddle tech or something like that, um, the edge guard actually holds everything together. And this paddle is just more of a edge piece because it's actually a uni piece. Uh, they actually sell a thing where you can replace these with color ones. That's why I know. So these things pop off, and you put a new different color if you want on the end, on the sides. So anyway, so that's the. Icon paddle with the grip, lead tape under there, and protective tape on the corners. And that is how you get your paddle ready for battle. If you found this content valuable, consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell button, you'll be notified of future videos. If you liked the video, share it with your friends. If you liked it, they probably will too. Have fun out there.